So let's look at this question. The base ratio is in the DNA and RNA for an onion or allium kepa are given below. And we're given a, a couple of different tables. What is the reason for the difference between these figures? So the first thing that we notice is that we're talking about both DNA and RNA here. So let's highlight those. We've got DNA in the top one and RNA. And another thing that you have to be quite careful of is that you notice that A and T, if you connect these two, they're approximately the same percentage, 31.3% for T, as well as 31.8% for A. And the same for G and C over here. And this is to be quite expected because remember with complementary base pairing, Every A bonds with a T, every C bonds with a G. So for every one of those, there should be another one of those. If there are 31.8 of the A's, you'd expect approximately the same number of T's as well. So that works out well. But if you look down in the second table, if we let's compare A and U over here, and they're, they're quite different. One is 24.9 for the A, whereas the U is 20.6. And this is once again to be expected because we don't have the complementary base pairing of uh, that is found in DNA. So that's one key thing to, uh, to notice. Now, let's go through the different answers. What is the reason for the difference between these figures? DNA is only found in the nucleus, but RNA is found throughout the cell. Well, this is a true statement. However, it doesn't actually answer the, the question. It doesn't actually account for the difference between these figures. So it's not really to do with that. B. DNA is in, made entirely of a double helix, but RNA is not. So this answer definitely sounds a lot better. We talked about how the ratios of A to T and C to G are meant to be about the same, and that's because DNA is a double helix structure. So remember we have our double helix structure with complementary base pairings. So every time there's an A here, there will be a T. And every time there's a C here, there will be a G over here, etc. Whereas mRNA is more of a single-stranded molecule, so it's kind of like this. And there's no other... If it was double-stranded, it would look like this. But it's not. So you'd have your bases along here. Like that. So, so B could be right. How about C? In DNA, bases A and T are complementary, but in RNA, bases A and C are complementary. So A and T, true, that is complementary, but bases A and C, they're never complementary. So this is completely wrong. How about D? RNA comes in three forms, but DNA only comes in one form. Well, RNA does come in three forms. It comes in the form of mRNA, uh, DNA tRNA, the transfer RNA that you use in translation, as well as cDNA. Excuse me. Well, it mainly comes in two forms, actually. We'll take that aside of what I said. There's actually only two forms. So this answer isn't correct either. So the correct answer is B here. Let's look at this one. Which molecules form the nucleotide marked in the diagram? So we've got the nucleotide here, and then the question is, what molecules form it. So you need to know about your basic chemical, uh, your chemical and molecular structures here. And you know that this is a double-stranded form of DNA. So DNA stands for deoxy deoxyribonucleic acid. And the first thing in, that you know is that this one is a ribose, or a deoxyribose. So there's so a, um, an oxygen has been taken out compared to the normal ribose. This one here is a phosphate. And our nitrogenous space is over here. So our nitrogenous space. So nitrogenous space means a base based on nitrogen. Okay, so now all we have to do is we have to compare them. So phosphate, deoxyribose, and nitrogenous space. That sounds good. How about B? Phosphorus, ribose, and nitrogenous space. Well, it's not ribose. We know it's deoxyribose. Remember the DNA? So that doesn't sound right. And it's also not a phosphorus. It's phosphate. So this one's wrong. How about phosphorus for C? No, once again, no. 
and guanosine or I guess it could be because it says G but then we know from the earlier answer that phosphorus is not correct. How about the next the last one D phosphate ribose and guanine. So once again we know it's not ribose but more deoxyribose so therefore the correct answer is A. Next question. The following diagram shows a short stretch of DNA. So if you've got the double helix structure, which confirms that it's DNA, what bases are indicated by la labels Y and Z? Very easy question, as, as long as you know what the, uh, the way that the, t the bases bond. And the way that I teach my students is that pretend that you have the four bases are called A, A for Anne, T is for Tony, C is for Kate, and G is for Gordon. Okay, and Anne and Tony, they can only date each other, and Kate and Gordon can only date each other. So let's look at here. So this is C, this is Kate. Who can Kate date? She can only date Gordon, so it's G. So that's Guani. Whereas, how about here? How about Anne? Who does Anne date? Anne dates Tony or T. So that's, so that's some thymine. So now if we would bring our answers back to the question, um, so what is Y? Y is thymine, so it can't be uh, uracil, because remember uracil is only for mRNA. And how about Z? So Z is guanine, so that's this one here. Easy. Question four. If 15% of a sample of DNA is thymine, what percentage of the DNA is guanine? So this is actually a bit of basic math questions actually, and um, we know that there are a few different answers. So let's look at it first. So we talked about complementary base pairing in DNA. So T is T is Tony, so it bonds with A, which is Anne. So that means if 15% is T, therefore 15% has also got to be A. That leaves what? A remaining 70% to be divided amongst the other two. To be divided amongst C and G. And we know that C has got to equal G as well. So if we divide 70% by 2, then we get 35%. That means 35% will be C. Or cytosine. And 35% will be guanine. So therefore our answer is C. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.